Pardon me, everyone. If I could have your attention, please. If I could have your attention, please. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Helen Cleese, and I'm president of the Alberta School Boards Association. And I'm up here to, because it's my distinct honor to introduce Education Minister Gordon Dirks and to welcome him to Alberta's fourth annual Rural Education Symposium. Now, Mr. Dirks is very passionate, and he's a passionate champion for public education. He's a proven leader and a community advocate. He believes that vibrant communities are founded on strong education and post-secondary education systems. He brings a wealth of experience to his role. He served as chair of the Calgary Board of Education, CBE. He is a former public school teacher, principal, university instructor, post-secondary college president, school trustee, and he's a father. Minister Dirks is a strong advocate for parental choice in schooling. Now, he previously served as an MLA and minister responsible for social services, urban affairs, and housing in Saskatchewan. And he served as assistant deputy minister for Alberta Family and Social Services. Now, since he became education minister on September 15th, he has worked tirelessly to meet with school boards, senior education leaders, teachers, students, parents, and the associations who represent these groups. Minister, we appreciate your efforts to reach out to those who share your commitment to public education. So ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming Education Minister Gordon Dirks. Well, it's great to be here uh, tonight uh, with my colleague Ron Casey from uh, this particular riding here. Uh, glad that Ron could join us tonight. Uh, honored to bring you greetings on behalf of uh, Premier Jim Prentice and uh, our uh, Alberta government. Thanks for the warm introduction. Helen, uh, I just love this place, don't you? I mean, is there a better place than Canmore? Well, maybe Banff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jasper. Okay, Regina. <laughs> um, no, I do, I, I do love this community. It's a wonderful place. Uh, we have very, very special friends who live in Canmore. And my favorite hot place to eat in Canmore is the Iron Goat. Does anybody know where that is? Yeah? It's a fabulous restaurant. If you haven't been there, uh, you need to go. And, and who is here tonight? We want to find out who's here. Uh, how many uh, trustees, board members, if you are, put your hands up. All right, great. How many uh, administrators, superintendents, those, those kind of good folks? Uh, yes, all right. And uh, how many uh, counselors, uh, rural municipality folks, so on? Some, yes, good. How many students? Any students? They're coming. How many teachers? Awesome. Awesome. I, uh, I love teachers. I love being a teacher. I, uh, I sometimes put my feet back and uh, just kind of reflect on, on the good days that I had teaching, and, uh, and I do miss them. I, uh, I really want to commend you, those of you who planned and uh, invested energy in putting together and uh, pulling off this very important uh, symposium. I hope you had a great day of inspiring uh, conversations. As a former uh, educator and uh, teacher, principal, board chair, so on, one of the things I just love is to be in the room with people who are passionate about education and passionate about our next generation of, uh, of young people. So what of our youth uh, for the future in rural Alberta? What of the future for rural education? What is the vibrant, sustainable school going to look like uh, in the future? What are those communities in rural Alberta uh, going to look like? Over the past century, we know that the face of um, education uh, in rural communities has undergone immense change. From those days long gone of uh, thousands 
of one-room schools across Western Canada, schools in which both my grandfather and my father were, uh, were teachers, to the unique realities that face our rural boards today. And you are intimately familiar with those realities, realities which pose really big questions. The overarching question is, I think, what should our vision be for rural education in this 21st century? And to develop that vision collectively, we need to grapple with very important questions, which you have been doing today and will again tomorrow. How do we not just cope, but thrive in the face of declining populations and aging infrastructure in some uh, rural jurisdictions on the one hand, and bulging student populations and attendant space pressures in other rural communities on the other hand? And what is the role that technology can and should play to personalize education and create vibrant learning conditions for our remote rural learners? Are there sustainable and innovative alternatives to closing small schools? How can we collectively foster the development of effective social and economic policy that supports a vital rural Alberta and, and reinvestment in our rural life? How can we improve rural high school graduation rates? What's the role of high school rede uh, redesign and dual credit opportunities? How can we, and the Minister of Agriculture kind of jabbed me in the ribs the other day with his elbows, how can we elevate the place of agriculture and rural realities in our Alberta curriculum? Very important question. Here's a big one. What can be done and what must be done to eliminate the achievement and funding gaps for our rural FNMI students? What role does education have in facilitating the Hutterite contribution to rural development? One of my colleagues has 18 Hutterite colonies in uh, his constituency. What collaborations and partnerships can be forged in rural communities among educators, businesses, and community organizations? And later I will share with you one fascinating example that just knocked my socks off, so to speak, when it was shared with me by uh, one of the boards. These are big questions indeed. So I want to thank you first for investing your time and your energy, your thought, being part of a really important conversation. In my books, nothing is more important for the health and vitality of the body politic of our communities and the future well-being of our children than education. Nothing. <laughs> One of our five priorities as a government is to improve Albertans' quality of life by becoming the leader in areas of health care, education, and skills training. How can we accomplish this leadership mandate, particularly as it relates to rural education? Well, let me focus on a few key elements for the success of our education enterprise, not necessarily in any order of priority, and there's certainly spillover implications outside of rural Alberta. First, we need quality school infrastructure, and we need it fast. That's why Premier Prentice and I announced in October that we would commit to the third phase of a 10-year capital build-out of new schools, expansions, and modernizations. Actually, it's going to result overall in more than 70,000 new spaces in our province. By committing to 55 new schools and additions, 20 modernizations, Alberta is now moving forward on 230 school projects. This is the largest school infrastructure project in Canada's history. And we also committed to a doubling, as boards know, of IMR funds over a two-year period. Since this 
announcement, of course. We've entered some very turbulent white water in terms of the province's revenue picture. And we're now facing somewhere between a seven and an eight billion dollar revenue shortfall for the year ahead. If we do nothing, we will eat through the contingency fund of over $5 billion in just a few months, gone, disappear. And we will blow through the Heritage Trust Fund in a couple of years, gone, disappear. We can't let that happen. Albertans deserve better. So clearly, some very hard operating budget decisions are going to have to be made, and they will be made, and we're all going to have to play a part in restraining expenditures in the public sector and in finding efficiencies and productivity improvements. And so we are going to see a multi-year fiscal framework coming forward soon that will be designed to recalibrate Alberta's revenue and expenditure framework so that we can remain strong and fiscally responsible as we move into the decades ahead. But as we do this, I want to assure you that addressing our school infrastructure needs remains a top priority for the government. We cannot wait until we are running surpluses at some unknown time in the future to build these schools. Oil goes up and oil goes down, but the kids keep coming. The province keeps growing, our present facilities get older, and we must simply get on with it. So we are going to use measured debt in order to complete these 230 projects, and we're gonna do everything we can to deliver on these commitments that we have made in a fiscally prudent manner. There you go. We're gonna build and we're going to replace and we're gonna upgrade because it has to be done. A second foundational element in the success of our educational enterprise is our curriculum. And we're presently engaged, as many of you know, in perhaps the most significant curriculum review our province has seen in decades. And I wanna just briefly say thank you to those of you in this room who have played a part to date in our curriculum prototyping exercise. We all have an interest in ensuring that we have a finely tuned, relevant, practical curriculum for the 21st century. And you won't be surprised to hear me say that this must be a curriculum that maintains an essential focus on mastering critical facts and skills in literacy and numeracy while simultaneously ensuring that our students are immersed in critical thinking, in collaboration, in communication skills, and the other kinds of skills that are gonna be very, very important for the success of our students as we move forward. It must also be a curriculum that appropriately introduces our students to a broad range of agriculture and rural realities. And uh, I've had discussions with the agriculture minister about this. I'm going to be looking very closely to see what the uh, prototypes are saying in various fields and to what degree rural Alberta is being manifest in our curriculum uh, going forward. A third area of focus that will strengthen Alberta Ed in the 21st century must be teacher capacity and teaching excellence. We know that at the center of success for our students is the teacher and the effectiveness of the teacher in that classroom. Whether those classrooms and teachers are in rural Alberta or elsewhere doesn't make any difference. And that's why I intend to put a strong focus on moving forward with many of the recommendations from the recent task force on teaching excellence. I've had opportunity to digest this important report and its recommendations. There's some of those recommendations, at least a couple of them that I don't agree with. I've dispensed with them. But much of what is in this report actually is very good and will greatly assist in uh, the future of education in Alberta. So I'm hoping 
that in the months and then in the years ahead that we can expeditiously move forward on uh, some of these recommendations in a collaborative way with the ATA, with the ASBA, with CAS, with our teacher training institutions and with other education stakeholders. A fourth area of concentrated focus must be on ensuring we have a high quality 21st century program of student assessment. We started down the assessment renewal road, as some of you know, leading to the replacing of our PATs eventually with SLAs, with student learning assessments. Ultimately, the vision is in grade three, six, and nine. This approach, it does make sense at a number of levels, but we need to get it right. And we learned a lot from our first grade three SLA pilot. We're gonna complete a second stage of piloting for, at grade three before we lock things down at that level, and then we will move on to uh, grade six and grade nine pilots in the years ahead. At the other end of assessment, we're in the final stages of uh, reviewing the 50-50 weighting of our grade 12 provincial diploma exams for final marks. Uh, can I just sit on this one for a while? Maybe spend a few minutes sharing with you what I've heard? Almost all of what I've heard in my consultation to date, although it hasn't been unanimous, is that we should amend the weighting in the direction of 70-30. Uh, we should do so, people say, in recognition of the following kinds of things. One, our diploma exams actually only test on 60 to 70 percent of expected curriculum uh, outcomes. There's no causal correlation between high stakes testing and achievement in the Canadian high school context. For example, Quebec actually seems to do better than we do in math uh, without diploma exams. There's no compelling argument to equally weight a student's achievement over a full semester or year with their achievement on a single uh, three hour test, especially when that test cannot assess the full range of curriculum outcomes. And then when some students' personal circumstances of life make it difficult for them to compete fairly uh, with other students. So there's a range of factors that are coming into play and uh, we're in the final stages of reviewing and we'll see where the plane lands hopefully shortly on this particular issue. Then the Premier has also tasked me with ensuring that we have coherent grading and reporting systems that are understood and acceptable by all Albertans, and that's part of the overall assessment piece. Assessment matters as uh, we move forward. A fifth area of focus for all of us, and certainly for rural education, must be maintaining our emphasis on inspiring education. Inspiring Ed is about many things. It's about personalizing learning, engaging students, shaping their minds and hearts to be engaged thinkers with an entrepreneurial spirit and an ethical mindset. It's about creativity and risk taking and opening the windows to let some fresh breezes blow in and through our education system. And we ought not to fear that. I wish I could share with you all of the interesting anecdotes that I heard about from our smaller uh, school boards uh, regarding inspiring education during the recent board tour that I had, but let me give you just one. One board told the story of how two high schools had their grade 10 classes journey the whole year focusing their learning entirely around a project to build two houses for the home market. Each curriculum strand, math, science, social, English, and on it goes, was wrapped around and was woven into this student-engaged project to build these homes. And it doesn't take you too long, I'm sure, to exercise a little bit of creativity and imagination to think about how you could wrap curriculum around and in and through that project right throughout the entire year with students. Math, social studies, studying communities, studying where certain kinds of materials come from, how you can use them, mathematics, science, all the rest of it. 
there's so many things that you could wrap into that project from a curriculum perspective, which is engaging students. And then, of course, the homes get sold on the market. And as they told the story and they told about all the different people in the communities, and uh, my phone is ringing. I don't know why that's happening. So I just turn it off. All the different people in the communities that were engaged as partners in this inspiring education activity. That's exactly what inspiring education is about. It's a microcosm of what can happen when we sort of throw the windows open. That never would have happened when I was in high school. I'm, I'm so encouraged and pleased to see that. A sixth, so just in conclusion on this one, we need to keep telling the inspiring education story and make that story come alive for students in our schools and in our communities. A sixth. <laughs> a sixth and hugely important area of focus that will directly impact rural ed, for sure, is First Nations, Métis, and Inuit education. The story of Alberta education going forward is one in which we must do better for our First Nations, Métis, and Inuit students. This has got to be a top priority. Knowing about First Nations, Métis, and Inuit history is important, not just for Albertans, but certainly especially for youth. Educating our students about our past, about the history of First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples makes each of us better, stronger, and leads to a continuing path of reconciliation. Last March, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada hosted its final national event in Edmonton. And in the spirit of reconciliation, our government made a commitment that all Alberta students will learn about the history and legacy of residential schools along with the history of the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples of Canada. We should be very proud of this commitment. But I do also want to highlight that it's not only important to preserve and learn from the past, we also need to look to the future. And that means we must work harder to ensure the future success of our First Nations, Métis, and Inuit students. The FNMI achievement gap, the funding gap, the governance gap, the teacher support and training gap, all of this needs our devoted attention in the years to come. It's a matter of fairness and justice. It's a matter, it's a matter of living up to our stated commitment that we're going to be student-centered for all Alberta students. It's a matter of building strong communities and local and provincial economies by graduating more and more Aboriginal students. And deep down, of course, it's just a matter of ensuring every student can rise to his or her full potential. And First Nations, Métis, and Inuit students cannot and must not be the exception. Over the past few months, important developments have taken place within our education department to ramp up our, our commitment in this regard. One of the most significant is that we've created a First Nations, Métis, and Inuit education division. The new division provides a locus within our department and within government to focus on addressing the achievement gap that I've mentioned. So we're going to continue working with First Nations in Alberta, with the federal government as well, to support First Nations in establishing an education system that is responsive in the best way it can be for our FNMI students. They are Albertans. They are our future. They deserve better. Other issues are going to touch all rural boards in the coming months. The new Education Act and new regulations and Bill 10 and collective bargaining and concerns that we all have about student mental health, an issue that I hope to, hope to put greater focus on uh, in the coming year. During my recent school board tour, I heard about the unique challenges that are 
faced by rural boards, and research is one of the ways to help us think about how rural boards can ensure that students benefit from inclusive and equitable access. And in light of this, the ministries of education, municipal affairs, agriculture, and rural development have commissioned the impact of schools on rural communities study. The impact of schools on rural communities study. This study will enable us to better understand the challenges, opportunities, and impacts of schools in rural communities. The project aligns with Alberta's rural development strategy, which identified the importance of rural schools and access to education as part of the learning and skill development pillar, and of the Rural Economic Development Plan, which recognizes the connection between community development and social infrastructure, such as schools, to economic development. It's all woven and tied together. So this research project will provide an opportunity to highlight the broad impact schools have on communities. It will inform work on rural education uh, sustainability, and it'll continue the process of building on Alberta research in rural education. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm a little hungry. Thanks for inviting me to the symposium to uh, address you uh, on understanding the rural reality, be part of the conversation. You have been part of a vital conversation over the last day or so. It's a conversation that we must continue as we together wrestle with the realities and challenges that are facing our rural communities. We're all responsible collectively for the strength and vitality of our future. And it's one of the great things that I love about Alberta is the way we are willing to uh, kind of get in together and uh, roll up our sleeves and say, how can we do this better together? We all bring something important to the table and we can continue collectively together working to ensure the future success of our rural communities, of our schools, and of our province. So thanks for providing me the opportunity to share these thoughts with you uh, this evening. I think we're just going to go right into the evening meal. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Dirks. I mean, there were some things in there in terms of infrastructure. Glad to hear that commitment's going to be going forward. I'm glad to hear collaboration on the Excellence in Teaching Task Force. We love to hear collaboration in terms of everything, budget, all those things, 70-30 diploma exams. We look forward to see where that goes. You talked about inspiring education, and you know what? I can't let the opportunity go by to say, look at all the great things we're doing, look at the initiatives we're doing, and school boards are very concerned about how we continue doing it, looking at the fiscal realities that we're gonna face. You know, we have some very serious concerns as to how to meet all these things, and I know you're aware of them. You and I have talked about it many times. Um, we've been encouraging all our trustees to talk to their MLAs and make sure they understand so that they hopefully can give you some support also. So that being said tonight, Minister Dirks is going to join us and have dinner. But you know what? Ron Casey is here. He's an MLA, and I know he'd love to hear from all of you. <laughs> right, Ron? Perfect. So there's our MLA for the evening. And, and please, he, you know, he's a great listener. So go over and talk to him. I'm sure he won't mind. Thank you again, Minister Dirks. We appreciate you being here. The third annual Alberta Rural Education Symposium Committee would like to take a moment to recognize our key sponsors. Synovus Energy, Alberta Education, Dream Stock Studios, and the Canmore Coast Hotel and Conference Centre. I hope that you have been enjoying today's sessions and networking opportunities. This evening um, brings you more opportunity for us to enjoy each other's company with these uh, wonderful people that you have at your tables and to enjoy another wonderful meal. So on that note, um, just an FYI, we're going to have some entertainment join us around 7 o'clock. But in the meantime, um, it's time to go and eat. And that is going to be, again, a buffet type of meal. So we're going to have to line up and get our meal. 
Um, so bon appetit. Enjoy. <laughs>